I read a lot of comments recently, which were actually asking if there are any better alternatives to Midjourney out there. Once because Midjourney is quite pricey after a while since you have to pay since almost a year now for their subscription model. So I thought why not showing you my top 5 favorite Midjourney alternatives. And the best thing about them is they are actually almost free or way cheaper than Midjourney and achieve the same level of quality in their products. So let's get started. Okay, great. So I wanted to directly show you the first alternative I found, which is by far most one of my most favorite tools when it comes to an alternative to Midjourney, because we are talking here about Adobe Firefly. You may have heard it already because obviously it's from Adobe. So um, the ones who also make Photoshop and Premiere Pro and here with Adobe Firefly, it's the first artificial intelligence, which also prompts images. And you see already here, you have a big text suite which you can use where you can type in your prompt and then you can directly uh, press enter and hit generate to generate the image. So actually, uh, just to test it and show you what it can do is you can uh, then just type in here a very basic prompt. So let's say a, uh, a cat sitting on the tree, on the tree, watching the stars. And let's send it. And then it's actually quite fast. I would say even faster maybe than mid journey in their normal mode because now it generates on the bottom the image that we want to have. And here we can now see, okay, um, which images we get. We also get four variations like in mid journey and we can actually use that for um, to choose which one we want to have and which one is maybe appealing to us uh, in the in the thing. So like this is really cool. Of course, it gives you more painterly style, but we can also control it, of course, in the prompts. I would say for Adobe Firefly, um, the most advantages is that it's entirely free. So you don't have to pay anything for the services. Uh, it has fast image generation time and you can use the images commercially, which is a huge advantage because in mid journey, uh, it uses uh, images from the whole internet, also copyright images. But with Adobe, you have actually a library uh, of stock footage that Adobe is using itself. And since Firefly is trained on their own stock image library, you can then use it in your own commercial projects and actually can use it to earn money with it, which is quite cool, I would say. But um, also, of course, there are some disadvantages when it comes to Adobe Firefly. For now, I would say um, one of them is for sure that it's only limited to the Adobe stock library, which is an advantage because you can use it commercially. But but it's only limited to about 40 million images, which first sounds a lot. But when you compare it with Midjourney, who's um, referencing images from the whole internet, it's quite limited, and you don't get that much of variation than when you would uh, when you would actually use Midjourney. So the second page I totally wasn't aware of, but when I found it, and I think I uh, saw it in a Discord thread, is this uh, page called Ideogram AI. It has very fast iterations, so I'm going to show you this. Let's take again, um, I don't know, let's take a car maybe, uh, driving, car driving on the road um, during sunset. Maybe something like this, and then we could say in the desert. And let's uh, click generate here. And then it's waiting to start and you can already see, okay, this is super fast, like way faster than mid journey actually, which really blew me away when I tested it the first time. So you can already see, okay, it's generating here. It has 99% and boom, we are done like that almost instant. And we see we also had get really cool results. So I'm, I'm a huge fan actually of ideogram AI and use it quite a lot since I discovered it because you can see like the, the results are also pretty good. Of course, here we see the number sign is a bit cracked up, 
<laughs> um, but otherwise, you know, we have the sunset here, we have the street, we have the, uh, the car we wanted, we have even um, different perspective, uh, perspectives on the road uh, if you want to have the car on the right side. And the cool thing actually is that um, we have here then also all variations and we have a remix mode, for example, which we can also use. So can, you can click here on image weight and then say how much it should influence that and we could say okay we don't want it in the desert maybe um i don't know something really crazy like um i don't know underwater so um <laughs> this will be interesting to see because it's during sunset but still underwater the, let's see what we get but i think you already see okay this could be also something i mean this looks quite promising and you see it was again super fast to generate so um yeah as you hear i already i'm quite impressed with what it can do so yeah and uh besides that the user interface is quite friendly built up so you can see here the images that other people did you can follow them which is quite cool so you can actually also build a following on here and see then for example what um up Abudu uh, came up with so you see uh, also that he received some likes and everything and this is what he got with so pretty cool like an Instagram for AI images which I think is quite interesting um, and another huge thing is like in Adobe Firefly it's royalty free and there's no copyright to it attached so actually you can also use all those images for uh, commercial free use which is super cool the next and third alternative I wanted to show you which is really cool and alternative to Midjourney is called Lexica AI and Lexica AI is super nice because um, of course you can also prompt here again and also look at images like in the other ones but Lexica AI also gives you which is really cool a really detailed prompt like what they used here which is super useful so you can actually use this here and use it as a base for our prompt so we can use it here when we type it in and we see okay um was it what it has already but then we could change it here and say okay we want this style but we want to have it maybe i don't know a a soldier wearing or let's say a soldier maybe a um i don't know a space astronaut uh with wearing sunglasses wearing sunglasses, uh, I don't know, um, floating <laughs> in the air. And then we can send this and let it generate. And uh, yeah, this is a result. And I think this is also really cool, like in terms of realism and detail that um, Lexica gives us, it's really nice. So this is actually also one of the big advantages that it draws from a huge library where it collects image data from, which is from Stable Diffusion, where it draws their inspirations from and uh, was trained on. And we see um, in terms of results, that's really impressive. Um, yeah, with all the details that we get, uh, there are no artifacts or something in the image which is quite nice and gives this cool cinematic look. So you can use those prompts and um, yeah, uh, which is super nice. I tested it here also with, for example, a pilot sitting in a coffee shop, having a chat with a dog next to him. And here we also see um, the results, which are awesome, I think. So super cool for, um, yeah, for stills in movies and image uh, refs for it, for the scene or seen block outs. So that's really nice actually, and I love it. Uh, disadvantages to this one, of course, uh, um, it relies heavily on AI generated images because it draws this library, as I said, for stable diffusion, which is of course also an AI image diffusion model. So yeah, this is one of the things it doesn't draw from the real images, let's say. And uh, otherwise, there's a bit of a learning curve, I would say, to uh, efficiently use it in your uh, yeah, video pi uh, pipeline, like in your image pipeline. But this is just a small thing. And one thing that uh, annoys me a little bit is that it's uh, quite long to generate an image. So for this one, I waited like over two minutes, I think, which can be even on fast mode. So um, this can be a bit annoying when it's, um, yeah, actually, 
when you generate multiple images and have to wait that long. But otherwise, I think for the results that we get, it's really worth it. All right, so our next is called Leonardo AI. And Leonardo AI is not just an image generator, it's also a image upscaler that you can use for your images, which is super cool. You have not just that, you also have a real time canvas, for example, a canvas editor. You can add motion to your images and real time generation. So there are so many features that you can actually use, which is quite cool. Um, because when it comes to mid journey, it's really only um, image generation itself, but here we can use uh, a lot of features, which is super cool. So of course uh, we want to know compared with our, uh, with mid journey. So let's navigate to the image generation. You can then type in your prompt here, choose also a model here because it's also based on uh, stable diffusion models. And um, you see it has a different ones that you can choose here to get different styles, which is also nice. You see, so actually, and choose, um, yeah, what type you want. Let's choose cinematic, for example. And then also type in prompts here. Um, so I don't know, let's take our cat example, for, uh, for example, again. And let's actually see what we get this time. And uh, yeah, this is example. Generation time was quite okay. -ish. I would say around 30 seconds, which is okay. And uh, then we also see the results, which are pretty cool, I would say. Um, quite realistic as well. We have a lot of details uh, and also depth of field and stuff like this, which is cool. And yeah, I would say when I see this, okay, yeah, this is a cat. <laughs> of course, here it still looks a bit painterly, but I think with the right settings, we could change that. And um, yeah, there's so many things you can test out here you see with all the animation styles and uh, also here the things you can use you can choose how many number of images you want stuff like this only downside here is that here you actually also have to uh, pay for a plan it's but it's almost the same pricing as mid journey so i wanted to bring this up as well because uh, it has so many features that you can use which you don't uh, don't really have a mid journey so that's quite cool and definitely worth to check out. All right, great. And now we actually come to our last and final alternative, which I wanted to show you, which is also really nice. So it's called Playground AI. You can then choose here an option, which is also quite cool. You can say, okay, I want, for example, now a character for mine, and then you can choose a template that you want. Let's say maybe this one, and then we get directly the prompt in here which is a bit the same like in uh, Lexica, where it also gave you a prompt uh, uh, that you don't have to start from scratch and you have something to, um, yeah, to go from. Uh, otherwise, you can, of course, also go from scratch. So we will do this, for example. But this is quite cool because we can yeah, see what we might get. This one looks also cool. So maybe we can take this prompt here, comic book cover as a um yeah something that we can then implement so let's say maybe spider-man um looking into the camera smiling when he can actually do that <laughs> uh, underneath his mask and then we put in the uh comic book cover which we got from the other prompt maybe uh, let's say high detail as well. All right, so we are back and this is our result, which looks quite funny, I would say. Um, so yeah, it's a bit uh, squashed as you can see, so it's not super perfect, but I, what I really like about this one is about Playground AI, that it's quite simple, so you're not, you know, overwhelmed like maybe with Leonardo AI, where you have really a lot of option and need to get into it first because here you can just when you have an idea or something just test it out in playground you know um and also choose then what it should be maybe an instagram post or you know and it gives you the right aspect ratio um directly you can also choose um yeah, you can also create your own diffusion model here maybe so um yeah this is quite cool so yeah this was actually the fifth um alternative I wanted to show you. 
think also here you can uh, use it for free commercial use. For this one, there's a free version which have a little bit of some limitations, but most of them uh, you can you can directly use here without spending money first. So yeah, this was actually all my five favorite alternatives which I wanted to show you. I really hope you found them useful. Don't forget to like this video if you have found them useful and like the video. And uh, hopefully I see you on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can keep doing this and uh, give you guys more tips and explore the latest AI tools with you. So actually see you on the next video. Bye.